We have one request here for showing how to do a larger painting from a smaller reference. Well, I've shown you a little bit about enlarging with the prospect tool on the Quick Tip 239, but this has a slight different take. I know a lot of people uh, like to take a photograph or, or use their uh, computer monitors and just paint directly from that. Um, and, and I do that some too if when I'm not painting in plain air. But one of my favorite things to do, uh, and, is to, and actually is to do this in plain air, is to do just sort of a very, very small study, such as I've done here, of whatever I'm looking at, and I do that in gouache usually, sometimes in watercolor. So that's a very, very tiny study. A lot of times those studies will be really, really nice. Uh, uh, I can imagine those as being really, really strong paintings. So how can I then uh, translate that into a larger surface? And I think that's what the viewer is really asking. So <clears throat> I'll show you my favorite way to do that. Um, and then, you know, there are other there are other suggestions on all over the place on YouTube and elsewhere too. You decide for yourself. But this works well for me. Now one thing, on here, on the smaller surface, um, I divide the spaces into nine little grid, into a grid that has nine little windows in it. And the way I do that is simply take a third of the, uh, of the size of the top and a third of the side in thirds and just draw a line. Now, if you have a, a, a wonderful little piece like that and you don't want to mess it up, you can use a pastel pencil, which I've used for this. If you use a pastel pencil to draw your lines, then when you're finished, you can simply just erase that with a soft uh, tissue and, and you will not have harmed your, photo, your picture, your little study at all. So, that's a beginning. And the next thing is, this needs to be, uh, or this, the surface that you use if you're using a canvas, watercolor paper, or any kind of paper uh, to do the, the larger version of the study, or even if you're doing a larger version of a photograph or whatever, that was the question, they have to be the same proportion. The format needs to be the same proportion, or very, very close to the same proportion. Well, one way that you can check that to be sure that you're in the same proportion is uh, with the prospect tool, but using it a little bit differently than the way I used it uh, in Quick Tip 239, and that is simply uh, to find here the, the length, and I used a little piece of need eraser here because this thing tends to slip, and I just attach a little piece of a need eraser right there to kind of lock it so it won't slip, and then I go over to my surface, I'm just pretending this is a surface here, I go over to my surface and then I can make this as large as I want it uh, by using this if I want it five times, ten times larger, or three times larger. In this case, I use three times because I want it to be small enough to show to you. And you can see I've already divided here for you. One, two, three. Well, if it's three times that way, it needs to also be three times this way. So I have to, in that case, adjust this to be the same size as its width and I'll again attach the kneaded eraser like this. Yeah, there we go. Now, so the sides then need to be three times the width, uh, uh, three times the width of this. So then I'm sure I have the same proportion. If you don't have the same proportion uh, using the method I'm going to show you, which is the grid method, if, you have, if you're not using the same proportion, it's not going to come out the same. Now, a lot of people use the grid method, but sometimes they use it in a more meticulous way. They absolutely do nothing short of stilt the painting. I want to show you a little bit more a looser and a more a, a freedom-oriented way of doing this. First of all, we'll just, we'll just put the grid on there. So if you made your marks like I've made here, and so let me just take this like this, and I'll just be sure I get it just as straight as I can as, uh, uh, as it goes across, and then uh, that mark. And you don't have to be, uh, you, you just need to be in the ballpark. Uh, you, those marks can be just a little bit squibbly, but um, 
Now there are people who would say they need to be absolutely precise, but I am not a precise school of thinking, so I tend to do a more ballpark sighting than precise. But uh, all right, so that that's good enough. I mean, some of those may be a little bit wobbly, but I don't care. It will work just the same. Now there's the grid. And what does that mean? Well, if you haven't or if you have, if you've never done a, a grid. Uh, it simply means that each one of these becomes small little pictures, sort of, of, that fit in this area. But the way you approach that is going to term, uh, determine, or go a long way to determining how alive your painting will be. So the best way to approach transferring a small image to, into a grid to create a larger image from it is to not try to start over here and fill in each one of those little shapes but look at it from the division of space adds large shapes. Now, if we look at this little, this little image, this little study that I've done, what do I mean by division of shape? The space, even though this is done really, really late in the evening and all the values are very, very close together, especially the values of the landscape, we can see that there's a division of space that the background of the woods uh, there's a little stream right here, if you can see it. The background of the woods actually ends up, now I didn't plan it that way, uh, but it does end up just about taking two-thirds of this space here. That's what we mean by division of space. So what I need to do, it's really about right in here, what I need to do first of all is, is divide the, the image here, or the space here, into large shapes. The large shapes I see here. And so then to do that, uh, we look at where does it starts about right here, and then what does it do in if it starts it start well actually it starts about uh, okay can't even read my own little piece it's lower there it starts about right here now you see the proportion if I'm looking just in this shape right here the proportion of this to this is about what I'm doing right here I can very quickly then carry that across and and very quickly carry it across in this direction. You can see how it kind of bends there and like that. Now I've got that big division of space. Now I can see that the, the creek part of it is just above that, almost on this line right here. Can you see it? It sort of meanders in and out of that line. So by, keep, by making these large shapes in proportion to the large shapes I see here, that gives me gets me uh, started to get the real correct proportion that's not going to be stilted. Now the next thing I do here is not put in all the details, but just go for the next largest, and we call them landmarks. Find the landmarks that uh, help divide uh, further subdivide the space. And so in this case, it's the vertical trees that be the landmark. We can see that this tree right here lives in this shape. This little square it lives, lives in this square, and about how much of that space does it occupy as compared to here? It's about like this, something like that. And then you can see it goes down. Uh, no, 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 it's moving. okay. Now it goes down at somewhat of an angle like that. You can see that. And as it moves into this square, you see it goes down at a little bit more of an angle like that. And you see as it moves into this square, it goes right in right across here and moves into this square, then it begins to sort of taper off like that. And then we see on the other side, it sort of hugs that line a little bit there, and then it goes outside that line in this shape, and then it sort of uh, sort of hugs to the edge a little bit, curving in a little bit, curving out a little bit into that shape, and continues about like that in this shape. And we can see that the bottom of it does something like that. So we can see, I can re I can re-examine now how does this shape fit in proportion to that one? Seems to be okay. This one is that one. The space here, I'm not bothered by those small trees. That fits just fine. This one and that one, that fits just fine. So then I, the next landmark is this tree. And I can see that that tree in this shape right here kind of uh, lives like that, sort of like that. And it sort of kind of goes up like that and, and disappears, kind of like that. Then in this shape, it sort of begins about right here and tilts over this way, like that, something like that. And then in this shape, 
it comes down and it begins to sort of turn a little bit like that. And then here it comes down and it turns and actually touches that edge like that. It see it's a little bit behind, so I brought it down just a little bit too far. But that's a that's a good way to compare. Um, now then we have a third landmark and that is this one. And we can see that this one lives about right here. And it comes down about right like that. Something about right like that. Actually, I need to move it over a little bit. See, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that when you're when you're just plotting this thing. You can move things around, uh, but you you only you have to be concerned about one little square at a time. Now this one is sitting right. This is really really easy because it's sort of sitting right in the middle of this square right here. So we can just. Just come on down and into that part of the square, and then it stops about right here, so we can just connect it here, like that. Now let's see, I believe I have the major landmarks. At that point, I don't need to do anything else. The, what I would need to do is to stand back and re-examine and be sure, does this feel, does the arrangement of these shapes, negative shapes this way and this way, positive shapes this way, this way, does this feel, have the same feeling as that, <clears throat> if you plot that the way I've just instructed you, where you're, you're putting your division of large shapes first, and then on to the major shapes, or I might call those major shapes, the landmarks. We'll just put landmarks here. And if you do that, then everything else will fall into place. Uh, but when you start painting, because you want to paint general to specific anyway, you don't want to start painting with details. If, on the other hand, if you were to try to um, copy every little thing you see in every one of those shapes in here, you're going to uh, defeat yourself before you ever get started. So the, the better way, the freer way to do an enlargement like that is simply to plot the major sh divisions of the major shapes of the large shapes first, and then the, the little land, we could call them the major shapes of the landmark shapes. Put those in and then begin the painting and you will see how the, everything else will just fall into place. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.